So I've had quite an ongoing issue making these videos lately and it is to do with one simple, very frustrating, very simply uncontrollable factor. There is rain, if I'm honest, it's nothing more than rain, but sort of rain that affects multiple areas of my, I guess, running roster. The first being, I don't really like to run in the rain, it's not preferable and to be honest, I'd rather wait it out if I have the time to have my run when it's not raining. The, I guess, probably more important factor about why the rain affects these videos is because I use a GoPro with an external microphone on the top and that external microphone doesn't like rain so much. So when it does rain, suddenly the effort I go to for good audio is, yeah, completely diminished into a crackly, Dalek sounding microphone thing. So, I guess the last and final reason why the rain affects all of this so much is because it seems to be this curse that I've put on myself. Probably a couple of videos back when I complained about the weather here in Australia and it's absolutely pissing down again. Come on, give me a break. No, since then I've started working and I work usually five days a week. I'm actually just on my second week of work now and uh, whenever I'm not working, it seems to absolutely piss down. So yeah, it's definitely a difficult time for me making these videos, but here's the bright side. I realize that we have to look beyond the hand that we've been dealt and all of that time that I spend waiting at work, for those of you that saw my last video, linked above if you haven't, you will know that I spend a lot of time waiting around and having given a good amount of thought to that, act of waiting and especially waiting around I guess to do things that I'd rather be doing I can't help but reflect and realize that you know life is going to be full of these moments of just waiting around waiting for an opportunity to do something to do something more enjoyable or to satisfy a craving but you know truthfully we can't wish our lives away and I actually got so much joy from making that video at work and I probably spent a couple of hours before I started recording that video just being quite bored really and not being very present. It's quite nice to make that video and then spend an hour or so editing that and uploading it to YouTube realizing oh wow I actually really enjoyed doing that so maybe waiting isn't so bad after all. <laughs> PFF episode seven? Shit, should have checked that before I started. Anyway, it's another episode of the Fort Ferry Ferry. I've just banked my second build week of my marathon training block. 109K in the bag, finished with a 26K long run that I did yesterday. And on that long run, I battled wind, I battled rain, and not surprisingly, I battled sun because I'm here in Australia and it's summertime now. So when I'm not working, the weather does crazy things. And yeah, that's what I have to look forward to. A bit like today, I finished work at six and got out of work and it's been pretty torrential rain and wind ever since. I felt a moment of lapse in the insane weather and I whipped the camera out and here I am speaking just waiting for that sweet drop of rain to bless this camera's microphone for me to sound like a Dalek once again. Anyway, let's get into the video before it starts raining. Finished yesterday's long run feeling, I don't know, rather energized, let's say, with a pep in my step because I had the goo birthday cake gel on my long run yesterday. That was the next gel in for review, following up the Campfire S'mores gel that I reviewed in the last episode, maybe episode five. God, I should have checked. Anyway, Campfire S'mores, felt like it let me down. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. No, I didn't, I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. Now I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10 because I had 
the sister gel to the campfire s'mores from you. I had the birthday cake flavour. And yesterday was slightly fairer playing conditions than the weekend before when I tried the campfire s'mores. The gel that I felt let me down, it didn't give me that energy boost that I needed on that long run. I realised that actually it was way too hot last week. Yesterday's run, albeit crazy weather, was a lot calmer on the whole. And I actually did feel quite energised from the goo gel. So, I promoted the campfire s'mores up to a 7.5 out of 10. It was a very strange flavour, but delicious. I do think that I got a little bit of a boost from it, but it was mostly psychological. It was mostly the shock and the adrenaline of what on earth is this in my mouth that spurred me on on my 24k long run last week. Anyway, moving on a week, moving on to yesterday, I had the birthday cake gel and I just made the most genuine and let me just say some of my best work that I've ever made on camera reviewing this gel and yeah, I recorded it on my phone and the wind definitely fucked my microphone and the footage sounds terrible. So I'm gonna put that footage on screen and I'm very briefly gonna talk you over what I was trying to say while the wind was doing that to my microphone. So the first bite of the Goo Birthday Cake Gel was absolute shock to the system. It was hundreds and thousands it was just sugar oh, on a whole new level. It was like snorting a line of sherbet. It was insane. And I almost choked. And this was about an hour into my almost three hour long run. So it was a bit of a shock, but my goodness, that was one of my favorite things I've ever eaten. It was so insanely sweet, but the flavors, the finish, oh, it was absolutely sublime. And there's not really much I can tell you about the experience. I was just on this heavenly float for the rest of the long run. I wasn't even sure what pace I was doing. I was just trying to compute if there was a language in which I could articulate how surreal this gel consuming experience had just been. And I didn't find one. So instead there's some really windy audio there. I can only try and piece together, but here I am today trying to do that. Anyway, the Goo Birthday Cake Gel, I'm going to give an 8 out of 10, and it was almost perfect, except it was so sticky. It was just as sticky as the campfire s'mores, and I just couldn't help but feel this kind of ruined my long run experience. So definitely a point needed to be knocked down there. So it was a nine out of 10. But then there was just this other point that I really thought if I'm gonna be diplomatic about this and I'm gonna do a very scientific and very authentic test of consuming this gel, I need to consider who is this review for and who on this planet would have or choose to consume this gel in a marathon, in a long run, or on, I don't know, a potential Iron Man somewhere down the line. Who would want this gel? And I thought to myself, absolutely no one. This is the most niche flavor, niche experience that anyone would want to have. So I had to just minus a point because it seemed ridiculous to say this is a nine out of 10 gel, only for probably 99% of the world to try it and say, what the fuck is this? So, that was my review of the gel, eight out of 10. It was quite solid in that when I went to sleep last night. I woke up this morning, had a comment on my Strava, on my post from yesterday's long run when I said I'd reviewed the goo birthday cake gel. And there was a comment from someone who retrospectively now, I'm not surprised bloody commented because I've never met this person, but for someone that's run a marathon every day for a week, and has also recently completed a backyard ultra marathon. I'm not bloody surprised they commented and said this is their go-to flavor. So Hayden Maples, fellow YouTuber, link down below. I applaud you for being the nutcase you are and I don't know, choosing to consume the goo birthday cake chill. It's just, it doesn't surprise me, man. Watching your videos, you're hardcore and I'm here for it. But yeah, I still stick with it, eight out of 10 despite the fact that Hayden also vouches for this gel. Not really sure how much confidence that fills me that 
I would ever be able to outrun Hayden if we ever met, yet alone hold eye contact with the guy. We'll see. Anyway, going back to last week, that was a pretty successful week of running. And despite it being my first week working my full-time job, which as you guys know, that watched my last video, involves a lot of time waiting. Despite that, it was a really solid week in the bank and I felt really energized during my waiting during the week at work. I did actually have a time to read an amazing book and that is Born to Run. I've heard it's a bit of a classic in the field of running literature and I absolutely didn't disappoint. I was recommended this on Instagram recently and absolutely I loved the book. And I finished it feeling this connection to the earth beneath me, and feeling like I wanted to get some barefoot shoes or just to go outside and have a run barefoot. But after consulting with my coach, and thank you, Tony, as always, for your wisdom, and in consulting the internet, I did actually realize that maybe rushing straight into barefoot running isn't wise, especially during a marathon training block. But I will say for all of you, whether you're interested in the many facets of barefoot running or interested in conducting any of your own running experiments with shoes of different drops, cushioning, etc. Definitely worth a read of Born to Run. It tells some really funny tales of running with a indigenous community in Mexico called the Tara Umara and they, yeah, just their way of treating local visitors and their way of communication and just their absolute killer way of running and just sort of outrunning everyone and everything. It's really worth a read. I'll link that book down below. But another book that I've really enjoyed lately was The Way of the Runner. And I was actually quite surprised by this book because it was incredibly witty and filled with loads of really sweet insights to life as a Westerner embedded in Japanese culture. And I've never been to Japan, but after reading this book, I feel so inspired to travel there and to do a bit of running, especially to try it on Ekaden, because I really didn't know too much about Ekaden, what an Ekaden is, and you know, the many years of history that the Japanese have with their Ekaden festivals. But yeah, I'm so impressed with the Japanese way of running. And I really feel like the author does a really, really great job at explaining the many different, I guess, pockets of belief from Kenyan running to Japanese running to more Western ideas of running training, nutrition, recovery, etc. Really, really fascinating. So I'll leave that book down below also. And, and guys, if you've read either of those books, do leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of those. For those of you regulars that are so kind to drop by the video, leave your comments, leave your thoughts below. I appreciate you all. Please do continue that conversation below. But the conversation isn't limited to here on YouTube. Please do check out my Strava down below. I'm always up for sharing details about my workouts, etc. And of course, I love sharing stills and videos throughout the week that I find interesting on Instagram. So please feel free to engage. We've got free running on all platforms. As we like to say here in this series, best is love, test the gov. 14 weeks to go, let's go.